This is our StoveTech rocket stove, one of two rocket stoves that we carry on our website. As some of you may know, the other, the second one is the Grover rocket stove. This is probably the most well-known rocket stove that we carry. And most of you know that our website is dedicated principally to everything solar cooking, all the different kinds of solar cookers. And we believe uh, very much that solar is the best way to go if you can. But of course, as we know, that not every place at every hour of the day has sunshine available to be able to solar cook. Earlier today, uh, uh, late fall day, I was able to solar cook uh, my lunch. But now it's a lot later in the day and the sun's rays are not that intense. So we also use this rocket stove. We consider a rocket stove probably the second best method behind a, a solar oven. And the reason why we like rocket stoves is because you can use any uh, biomass fuel, whether it's dry leaves, dry grasses, kindling, coconut husks, pine cones, anything that's dried out and it'll burn efficiently. Um, a rocket stove is designed on what they call a rocket elbow principle. Um, it's designed or fashioned in a manner that will allow for more efficient ventilation of your fire, which helps to burn your fuels much hotter, thus producing less emissions, less smoke. And you have, and it also enables you to use much less fuel than you normally would, say, over an open campfire. A rocket stove's insulated, so that you're not losing a lot of your heat into the, uh, the stove itself and then radiating outward. So most of your heat will come right to the bottom of the pan where it's most effective. And it will allow you to cook more quickly and more efficiently with less fuel. So we're going to start this fire here. I like to put my paper down inside. Just I take a small wad of paper. And then I'll put all my other uh, kindling right in on top of that. Once you've got your fire going, you'll see that it reduces the smoke afterward uh, greatly. Of course, when it's first starting, it'll be a bit smoky. And especially because here I'm using the pine boughs or pine needles off of our old Christmas trees. And those always have a lot of pitch, so they burn very smoky. But once the fire is going and it's very hot, you'll see the smoke reduced greatly. So I use the pine needles just to get the fire started. After that, we just use a regular dried kindling. And we like to cut up our Christmas trees every year, save those for just in case. Same with a lot of wood that we'll get from construction sites. Since the smoke or the wood here isn't going to be touching the uh, food, um, it doesn't matter if we're using um, pre-treated lumber, uh, such as your 2x4s and things like that. As you'll notice, there's very little smoke now and quite a flame already coming out. Then from here on out, once the fire's going, we'll start feeding... We start feeding the wood in this direction on the little rack. It's designed to allow you to feed it in at a more controlled rate. Probably shouldn't have put that one in up there. That's a little too long. There we go. Now we're ready to go. Um, we've cooked on this where we've used a minimum of seven, eight sticks. No bigger than, than this. And we're able to cook from beginning to end with a very hot fire. In fact, we do our deep frying. I uh, do a lot of french fries, scones, fry bread and things like that over this. And we use this quite often when it's cloudy or rainy, you know, nighttime, which is not often down here that we don't have sunshine, but we like to use it in case of an emergency. Now that my fire is going pretty well, it only took about a minute or two for it to to get up to heat. I'll just lay this on top here. Um, 
if you have a windy day, and as most of you know with gas cookers that wind can blow that flame sideways. So if you'd like to direct more of the heat to the bottom of the pot, this cooker here comes with a, uh, a collar that can be adjusted. Lay it right there. And then lay your pot right down inside of that. 